Hello, I'm Rochelle, and this is episode 96 of The Genuine Realtor Show, which airs every Friday. There are a lot of misconceptions about realtor commissions, how easy it is to get rich selling real estate, and how overpaid realtors are. I'm here to share the facts so that you can make informed opinions versus ones based on hearsay. Ready? Let's go. If only I had a dollar for every time I overheard someone talking about commissions and how overpaid realtors are. But let's get real for a moment. There is a very real reason the vast majority of people who get their license fall off in or before their second year. It's not as easy as the rumors make it look. The figure that is often quoted is that 87% of agents change professions within the first two years. Of those realtors who do stick it out, the majority do less than two deals a year. So no, being a realtor is anything but easy. However, we're not going to deep dive into what it takes to be successful in real estate here. We are going to focus on where the commission you pay your realtor goes. Before I dive in, I do want to point out a few important things. Realtors take a lot of risk when listing a home. We are paying the upfront cost for marketing and put a lot of hours in with absolutely no guarantee that we will be paid. Realtors only make money when our clients successfully buy or sell. We work a lot. In fact, we work almost every night and most weekends. Even holidays aren't safe from clients having questions and wanting to see something. The personal safety risks are real. We regularly meet strangers in homes and that can put us in compromising situations. Also, there are a lot of legal liabilities we take on in this profession. We need to be well-versed in homes we've never lived in and are liable for the information we provide the public. All of this to say, being a realtor is no walk in the park, and we work very hard for the fraction of the commission we do get to take home. And on that note, let's cover the commission structure. The majority of the time, the realtors in a transaction are paid by the sellers. It's been this way for decades, and in rare circumstances, the buyer may be responsible to pay, but if that were ever the case, your realtor would let you know. So again, when you buy, you are not responsible for the commission, but when you sell, you are. Next, let's cover the blanket legalities. There is no such thing as a set commission in Ontario or Canada for that matter. The Competition Act has outlined that realtors are not allowed to collude on commissions. This means we cannot price fix or cooperate with each other to charge a set rate. What does this mean for you? It means that commissions are negotiable and that you can almost always find a company who structure their remuneration in a way that works for you. Years ago, six or 7% was common, then 5% became the recurring percentage. Now we have commission models that go as low as 0.5% or even a one-time payment. Just as the commission costs fluctuate, so do the services provided. Someone who is charging you a fee of a few thousand dollars cannot offer the same services as someone who markets your home with a few thousand of their own money in upfront pre-list preparations. The point is realtors may have an office policy on what commission they are charging, but ultimately, you need to focus on services provided and how it will fit into your goals as well as impact your day-to-day -day life. So now let's look at a 5% commission breakdown on a $500,000 sale. The total commission payable would be $25,000 plus HST. Yes, real estate services are all HST applicable, so definitely account for that when budgeting for your sale. Right off the top, 50% is going to the cooperating brokerage. That is the realtor representing the buyer in the transaction. From the remaining 50% or $12,500 that the listing realtor is working with, they will have a commission split set up with their brokerage. This can range anywhere from a specific transaction fee all the way up to 50% of their commission. Since this is my video, I'll go with my commission split, which is 25% to my brokerage. Next up is income tax. For the realtors who are masters of their business, they could be paying as much as 50% of their income to the Canadian Revenue Agency since their income bracket dictates the percentage paid to CRA. For this breakdown, let's go with 30% to cover us mere mortal realtors. Of the remaining $6,575, we have standard pre-list and marketing expenses. These are things like staging consultation, photography, drone footage, videography, staging expenses, ongoing advertisements, etc. Typically, we spend about $1,000 to $2,500 depending on the size of the home and what it needs to be market ready. Next, we take operating expenses into account of $1,500 to $2,000. 
These are things like administration costs, pulling title inquiries, paid MPAC reports, real estate licensing fees, liability insurance, vehicle and gas expenses, auto insurance, communication expenses, just to name a few. So what am I left with? The net income from a $500,000 sale price with a 5% commission structure would be around $3,000. Now, when it comes to commission-based sales, obviously the more expensive your home is, the more a realtor makes. But the costs associated with marketing and selling your home likely don't increase at the same rate. So it is absolutely fair to work together to find a commission structure that works for everyone, or you may not be the right fit for each other, and that's totally fine. If you're still here with me, thank you. This was definitely a lot to cover and I appreciate you taking the time. If you're thinking about buying or selling, reach out. We'd love to help you or connect you with a trusted realtor from our network if you're not in our area. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, keep it genuine. All right, Echo, play another song about money. This is E-Money from Spotify. Yeah, I called it on that one. Echo, play a song about money. Money by Pink Floyd on Amazon Music. Good one.